Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S episode number 6. Okay, uh, the previous episode, Ilulu finally found a job. And <laughs> it's a job at a dagashi shop which uh, of a character who we already knew, that old woman. And uh, a new character we got introduced to, um, I forgot his name, it was something like Taki or something, I can't remember. Uh, something like that. Um, he is the grandson of the owner and like you know like like he was supposed to Take over but he doesn't want to he's like busy with his own stuff So Ilulu is doing it and she's helping all that kind of things and Ilulu really is uh, Like you know happy with this job. It's something that he she, obviously she did not uh, decide on a whim because we kind of saw like at the beginning I thought she decided on a whim but in the end we actually realized that it's because of her love for children that she actually took the job here because from her flashback we already know like you know she used to play with two children before uh, so yeah and also that was that and there's another thing that we got in the previous episode that was a little backstory of Elma and Toru and uh, funny thing they are basically like you know as they say like uh, what's that word as like you know you fight more that you're better friends or something like that <laughs> something like that you know like they kind of bicker around each other but they're good friends uh, when it comes to it in the end and we also saw kind of the differences the way their ideals kind of differ at the same time the way Toru kind of told Elma that you cannot keep pampering the humans like this what will they do when you're not there or will you like stay here forever is that what, what you're going to do uh, stuff like that and uh, yeah we got a little insight on their uh, you know relationship on their backstory so yeah so yeah guys that was the previous episode so let's get started this is episode number six of Miss Kobayashi's, uh, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S so yeah so I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here, sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started. Alright, so here's the countdown. 3, 2, 1, go. Um, whoa, that's a way to... Oh, this is... <laughs> Luqua. Oh boy. Where have I heard his voice actor or actress? What the hell? I'll 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 check it out after this ends. Like the voice actor really sounds familiar. I don't know why. <laughs> so today's will be <laughs> an episode focused on Luca and. What was his name? Sota, isn't it? I think, yeah. All right. Okay. Um. What did he? What the hell? He installed cameras. Um. Um. What? Oh, she knows that he is spying on. 
<laughs> yeah, that's her shortcoming. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh my god, okay. Oh boy. Wow. <laughs> he also brought one for himself. Wow. What? She's diligent. He's diligent. <laughs> why were you... Why was he walking on that side if he... He's a gentleman, you know? Wait. They met it before, didn't... Yeah, they met before. Oh yeah, Toru might know. <laughs> okay. Huh. Oh, oh. Oh, okay. So that's why. That's how. What? Hmm? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> what? <Wow. laughs> um... Okay. Yeah. Oh my god, she's here. Oh. <laughs> oh boy. Losing a home. Oh. Uh. Okay, that's why she travels. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but she's a dragon, like <laughs> she's a lot older, experienced, and like in a lot of way ways she's you know she's lo lived for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that you can't do anything about. As I said, like she's she's a lot older and a lot more experienced. Um. Um. <laughs> okay. Must be must something happened with. Oh. Oh, wait. Fafni is there. Well, well, you can you can stay there as a roommate. Yeah, new events or something, <laughs> or oh, new game. <laughs> Whoa! Kotowaru. <laughs> okay. Break. <laughs> All right. 
Okay, he's playing retro RPGs, I can see that. <laughs> oh boy. Oh yeah, he can... I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> With phones? Um, wait, you can... Um, I don't know, like... <laughs> <laughs> like you can do something with his games or something? I don't know. Oh, that's Fafnir. <laughs> Share a little space. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Can't know what it's doing. Hmm, she might know. Yeah. You can contact Sota if you know. Okay, there you go. Abroad. What? <laughs> I can help. Yeah, I'm the... Yes. <laughs> Very responsible boy. <laughs> but Luca's also a dragon, so... But Fafni is... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. There you go. So. Oh. What the? Whoa, that's very pretty looking. I don't think it's it's a good idea to do this. I don't know. Okay. Lifespan. <laughs> um. <laughs> Um, okay. Mm, I don't think he's gonna do it. Let's see. <laughs> Still playing the same. Nah, he won't do it. He, he He's better with him being friends with him, you know? <laughs> well. It's <laughs> just eight, dude. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Imagine. Oh. Hmm. Oh, so from as, as soon as you're born. Okay. Oh, that's why there's no, yeah. Oh. Oh. 
Okay. Ah. Hmm. Um, I don't think that's the full reason, but <laughs> Grum. Oh, Siegfried. Okay. <laughs> nah, video games. <laughs> well, Taki is more experienced in video games, so you know. Damn, that's cool. Oh! <laughs> Oh boy, <laughs> he showed the glimpse of uh, a little glimpse of his true power in front of Sota. Okay. Um. <laughs> Get her for this. <laughs> well, they can go with, uh, uh, um, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the way she talks is so cute. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> All right. Really impressive voice acting for Kanna, you know, like. All right. Hmm. Um. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, okay. All right. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> oh, you're dead. <laughs> More time. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, that's good. Oh, wait. I remember I I this once I kind of did this you know like using a <laughs> whoa what the hell <laughs> whoa uh, as I was saying I kind of did this before with a you know a foot uh, soccer ball like this. <laughs> All right, it's a little picnic, you know. <laughs> she takes one bite of it. Oh no, here we go. Oh boy. Oh, she has another one. Sad. <laughs> Drop that as well. 
Um, maybe not. <laughs> What? Um. <laughs> she just wants the food. She just wants the food. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. Ah, oh boy. Oh, your food. It, it. Okay, the food is okay. <laughs> Oh my god, it's just going to pop, oh yeah. Alright, let's resume the journey. Mm, wow, so many things happening, you know. It's nice, because, yeah. It's kind of different from what she's thinking. They usually revert to the dragon form and... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> whoa, what's happening? Whoa, whoa! Wait, is that... Yeah, El... Yeah... <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Photo evidence. Oh boy. And she's gone. <laughs> she's gone. <laughs> Good job, Kanna. <laughs> okay, there you there we are. Let's take a picture and You can. Oh yeah, there you go. Hmm. <laughs> okay, there you go. It's a long way. Yeah. Change the flow of the river. Hmm, okay. I'll change. <laughs> <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> nice little picnic, vacation, whatever. Oh, the monster, yeah. <laughs> And there was <laughs> what? That was CG. Okay. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, so this uh, episode also had three sections. Uh, first was with Lukwa, then Fafnir, and then Kanna.
Okay, so Oh yeah, I need to check out the voice actor of Sota. I don't know why, but I'm feeling as if I've, I'm very familiar with it. Can't pinpoint who it is, but okay, that is it. I think yes. All right. First of all, uh, let's check out Sota's voice actor. Um, Sota. All right. His voice actor is Kaori Ishihara. Okay, who did she voice act? Uh. Wait. Mm, wait a minute. Okay, I'm not finding anyone that like I don't know why, but I was feeling I've heard it before. Like yeah, obviously like there there are um, characters she voice acted, but I'm not that much uh familiar with them like i know them but they're not someone who would put a lasting impression on me i think mm, yeah like that's kind of my mistake i think mm. yeah and yeah no no there are a few characters that yeah they uh, she voice acted, but that was like no, not that much of a like you know important characters, like basically side characters. But uh, I don't know why. But uh, I, I'm guessing I, I I thought it was some other voice act voice actor or something. Anyways, uh, so yeah, okay, so <clears throat> all right, so this episode here, um, we as I said, like you know, it's broken up into three parts. Uh, the first part is Lukua, then uh, Fafnir, and then Kanna. Alright, so for Lukua here, the thing that she said about her past, I'm sure that's something that's related to her backstory about her losing her how home, and like, you know, that's why she's kind of not, usually does not persist in one place, travels around. Mm, but as, like, you know, Toru said, that since she is settling down at one place for such a long time it really does mean that she uh, respects uh, you know um, Sota and uh, <clears throat> otherwise she would not do that <laughs> and Sota trying to like you know be like uh, obviously like he the, the way when he uh, summoned Lukua he was basically like as he said like you know I wanted uh, I want to be like I'm sure he just wants to be someone who is on equal standing with Lukua. You know, the way she, he always tries to uh, make her, you know, submissive uh, against him. And because he always says that, yeah, you're my familiar. That's basically because he actually realizes his own shortcomings, as we saw in the end when he says that I know that I'm not that much of a, you know, uh, uh, what did he say that, that that actual sentence like i'm not that much of a yeah i, I was not, the, it was not good enough like i'm not good enough for you or something like that he said so like he basically like he realizes his own shortcomings and he really wants like the whole fact that he is the one who uh, summoned her and at the same time this whole thing of like i myself am not worthy enough these two things are kind of making him always try to <laughs> like you know uh d defeat uh Luko in one way or the other Tr always trying to like you know know her weak points but kind of getting uh like you know it, like back to like you know what do you call it like, it's it kind of overturning the whole situation is kind of turning on him in by the end of it like you know as we saw like uh, like he brought coffee <laughs> bitter coffee to Luko and he himself was unable to handle it like this so he always tries to do this because of that he just he just wants to be treated as an equal 
uh, but as we like you know as we can see here like uh, it's not that Luqua is <laughs> she's just like messing with him you know in a way and like from that camera scene we could obviously see like she obviously knew that the camera was done just she was just messing with him <laughs> she was like oh my weakness is like you know wearing clothes and then he brings the clothes and he she's like okay i'll wear it <laughs> oh boy and uh, <clears throat> and uh, then <clears throat> okay and then we're like you know he 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 needs to like obviously he is a child like sota is a child and Luqua here is a dragon uh he has been alive for a long while it was it's, it's a quarter obviously so <clears throat> there's definitely going to be something like this that's going to, to happen because she is a lot more experienced a lot more you know knows the world more than him uh so like she like you know it, it's going to be a little bit difficult for her, him to actually be on the similar level as her at least now the the way he is now he's definitely going to like you know mature a lot more and maybe like you know after a few years he is he's definitely going to reach a position where they can probably be in a similar you know position and uh, but i don't know like maybe that won't happen like you know luca is kind of like <laughs> like you know he likes teasing him and everything so that probably won't happen i'm not sure but yeah like but this like obviously the, the like you know luca does that but that doesn't actually mean that he she is not respecting him she obviously holds a little amount of fondness and kind of a little amount of respect for him as well so that's why like you know like the thing that she's basically doing as, as she said like and he said like you know like i feel like i'm not uh good enough the thing that she is doing is for his her fondness of him and i'm sure sota understands that i'm sure in a way but since he's a child he still wants to be like you know like there's this whole fascination especially for the children who uh like you know they have this fascination of growing up you know like, like like i also had it when i was younger and like you know we always think that oh when will we grow up it will be so cool you know when we grow up no one will be able to tell us what to do you know we can do whatever we want to in a way but like all ch children have this and but unfortunately when people actually do grow up they actually realize that nah <laughs> being a kid was better <laughs> oh boy so yeah and uh, <laughs> boy and uh, as luca was like you know kind of patting him on his head he was like oh i wish you don't treat me as a child but that's going to happen obviously like luca is a lot more <laughs> like teasing him and kind of a lot more uh, experienced about the world than him but yeah yeah that was the thing with luko and sota and then the whole thing with taki and fafnir <coughs> now here uh, fafnir <coughs> tells now obviously that's not the full reason that he's here but kind of a reason why he's here in a way he like you know he knows that uh, like you know the, what the thing that he said here um, yeah dragons are mimicking humans like he says that uh dragons were not like this before they had no like you know the whole thing of parent and child is not there at all they like you know they were like <clears throat> creatures who never did really care for their young the like you know there's no child or parent status there as soon as i'm sure like you know as soon as they were born they like got thrown into this whole ranking system as to who is stronger than who and like you know according to that their like you know their what can i say the position in the world was like you know uh decided you know how strong is someone and uh, like you know this type of like uh what do you call a brutal world like um, you know always filled with war uh, and uh, bad like you know a, a very bad type of a situation where it was like a dog eat dog world especially uh, like you know for the dragons and all so now he's saying that the dragons are mimicking humans and saying that they know that such values will lead to foolishness but desire them anyway <clears throat> so yeah and so the dragons here as well yeah he's saying that we are just masquerading as humans 
Okay, and he says that like, you know, like everyone here is like the dragons that are here, Toru, Elma, and you know, they know that and they're still doing this whole masquerading as humans, trying to uh, mimic them. And uh, even uh, he even says that Kobayashi drove away their Emperor of Demise, so he grew curious as to why are they so, like, you know, like, you know why are they so keen on keeping up this act? And that's why he also, I'm sure he also wanted to, you know, like he says that he is keen about that and that's why he's here there you go and so he says that so i decided to try playing the game a bit myself to learn more and <laughs> funny thing here like he says that he wants to actually realize and actually understand why they're doing this why they're mimicking as a human but at the same time he's also mimicking a human playing games and everything getting hooked up into this and <laughs> in a way I think he is even more hooked into this than the others. I don't know. Like, you know, obviously Toru loves, uh, like, you know, Kobayashi and all. But as soon as he got here, Fafnir, he got so into this whole video gaming and, like, you know, this whole weep culture that he is just... <laughs> he is not getting out of this soon. And in a way, he is also experiencing that same life. And I'm sure he'll also realize that why they're doing this because... It's, I don't know, like, it, it's, it's fun, you know, I think that's the only reason why everyone is doing this, like, you know, like, because it's fun, it's more fulfilling than always, like, you know, at being at each other's throats, like, you know, this type of a peaceful world. I'm sure all of the dragons that came here is, like, attracted here because of that one reason, that peace, you know, the, 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 the thing that you can do almost anything here without, like, you know, like, there's no type of, uh, you know like what can i say like it's a peaceful world that's basically it so toru is here toru can like you know do what she wants elma she's doing her thing kana like you know living her life going to school fafni getting like you know hooked into <laughs> you know video games luka uh, he she's also doing her thing so yeah that's basically it and he he wants to actually understand why everyone is doing that and I'm sure he is understanding that little by little because he himself is so hooked up into all of these things. He's also kind of mimicking a human. And uh, he, because he enjoys it, he's doing it. And he says that that's the reason why he gave uh, the permission to give him a nickname. You know, the Fafkun. So, <clears throat> yeah, like, interesting. Like, it, like you know, he, like, he, I'm, like, you know, he says something, like, in, in a way he's saying, you know, everything, like, makes it feel as if he is you know like checking the waters out checking the things out here and trying to understand what's happening but i don't know if he realizes but he himself is a lot like you know more hooked into this whole thing than he realizes it and uh, yeah I, I think he also realizes it and he is like you know finding it extremely enjoyable here so that's why he's still doing this and uh, you know what there are a lot of games that has come out and if even if he like you know one day he's able to complete all the games this is like you know new games are coming out new animes are coming out a lot of things are happening so yeah he, he's going to be busy for a while here you know and games <laughs> Games are not easy to beat, you know, it's not that you take up a game and after two days it's over. No, games take a lot of days to complete and like, you know, like and the way games come out every year, like, like, you know, hundreds and thousands of games come out. He's going to be busy for a long time and wow. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> boy. Okay. And that and, uh, like, you know, they have a little bit of a battle where obviously uh, Take is a lot more experienced in gaming than him and he beats him completely and uh, yeah and then like you know sota kind of asks <laughs> take how can you be cool like him and you know like he is like all cool and everything with his hands on in his pockets and kind of talking like that as well but as soon as he brings up his glasses he unlocks and he unleashes his true power of the weeb and uh, yeah <laughs> sota sota at that moment sota like actually got to realize how powerful take is <laughs> boy Okay, anyways, okay, that was the whole thing with Fafnir and them. And next come Kanna and uh, Kanna and Saikawa. And it's like a cute little thing where they go on a little outing. 
uh, to find the place where the rivers meet <coughs> and you know they like, do a little like game where like jumping over those <laughs> like you know uh, things and then um, you know, little football like you know that thing that they did they eat a little bit have a little bit of a picnic in a way and uh, Saikawa as always gets excited <laughs> each and every now and then <laughs> whenever Kanna he gets she gets into contact with Kanna and uh, <clears throat> yeah it was nice to see like you know like you actually realize that like funny thing that we see in this uh, like you know, in this section that what they did is basically start walking from their home to this like you know meeting point of the rivers and they experienced so many things you know like so many different views like someone is painting someone's taking their dog out um what is children playing there's this one person who was kind of blanking out you know uh sitting and when the ball hit his head he got some kind of enlightenment or something <laughs> that and uh, you know so many things that are happening here and uh, like we actually realize that we never actually uh like us as like you know humans as well we whenever we go out we are always like okay like we have to do this from this point to this we go there do our thing come back we don't even like you know like like we don't even look at our surroundings nowadays and like you know this section really showed us how like you know like so many things are happening if you actually pay attention to the outside world and it was a really nice section you know like like it, this section really made me <laughs> like, you know, like it really made me feel as if like oh it'll be really great to actually like you know start walking uh, along a riverside and like you know see what's happening you know in your surroundings and just like walk unless and until you reach a position and you've seen everything that's actually like you know without any kind of destination any kind of goal you know you just start walking and start watching everything around you so just like something like that you know like <laughs> it's kind of interesting in a way because as i said like you know nowadays it's always like yeah whenever we go out we have to do this so like, you know always uh some kind of goal oriented and we never actually do start walking like without any destination and like you know like see everything that's happening around us i'm sure that there are a lot of people who actually do that but at least for me like you know and i'm sure a lot of most of the people like this doesn't happen nowadays but uh, yeah that's kind of like you know anyways okay and then they got to see obviously elma you know <laughs> bathing in the river <laughs> boy and <laughs> psycho was like oh my god i, I found a new creature <laughs> uh, thankfully kanna was there and did not let him you know her take the picture and then they finally meet the uh reach the you know the crossing point of the rivers and from the you know from what the old couple said like you know th it was different here like you know they changed the flow of the river Kana also started thinking that will i change as well now like obviously saikawa says that yeah obviously you're going to you know, grow up and all but Kana is like you know she's a dragon it's going to take a lot more time for her to actually grow up i think i'm not sure how this actually works i think there's something like that so I'm sure she was thinking about something like that, you know, like humans will change, you know, like she's a dragon here, like Saikawa is like, you know, like she's standing here after five years or something, Saikawa is definitely going to be a teenager and he'll be a lot more taller, a lot more different, but who knows, maybe Kanna, I don't know, like as I said, like I'm not sure how this works with dragons, but I doubt that like, you know, Kanna is going to grow up like that in a matter of five or six years, it's going to take a long, lot more time for her to actually show changes in her appearance be it like you know anything else so i don't know i'm not actually sure did they even ever mention that how they like you know do they actually grow up or something i can't remember i maybe they did really mention something like this in season one i can't remember but yeah if they like mentioned anything about this before in season one if you guys know it you can let me know in the comment section but yeah anyways yeah and that was that and then they go to <laughs> you know the classroom and like was like oh i saw a weird creature <laughs> and kana is like no it was cg <laughs> oh boy that was something 
All right, so yeah, guys, that was it. That was my reaction to Miss Kobashi's Dragon Maid S uh, uh, episode number six. So if you guys enjoyed my reaction, be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed. Comment down below anything you want to say or anything you want to let me know. I'll check them out. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S. So till then, goodbye and have a nice day.